Okay, let's look at problem number 14 on the semester exam uh, study guide. It says Marisol is creating a custom window frame that is in the shape of a regular hexagon. Remember regular meaning all sides are congruent, all sides are same in length, and all interior angles are congruent or the same in measure. So for this hexagon, she wants to find the area of the hexagon to determine the amount of glass needed. She measured diagonal D and determined it was 40 inches long. Okay, so we, we want to find the area of this hexagon. And we don't have a formula for that, at least not yet. So what we're going to have to do, you'll see in a little bit, this is a pretty complex problem for where we're at. You're, we're going to have to use trigono uh, trigonometry. Okay, so we have, let's look at this. We have a, we have a hexagon, all right, and... Um, Let's think about this. this is a regular hexagon, and so we had a diagonal that was 40 inches long. If it's a diagonal, it's going through the center of the hexagon. So that point D that we saw on the problem, it is going through the center. So D is the center of the hexagon. So if we construct segments from the center to the to the vertices of the hexagon, notice we have six tri six uh, triangles. And not only do we have six triangles. They, they are isosceles triangles, okay? These segment lengths, DC, DB, and DA, are all going to be the same length, all right? So this, let's just, uh, you know, th this triangle, they're all, they're all congruent, okay? Um, you know, and how do we know they're congruent? Because, you know, these sides are congruent, and um, the sides, this is a regular hexagon, so these sides are congruent. So the side-side-side postulate tells us that these six triangles are congruent. So remember we're trying to find the area of the hexagon. If we want to find the area of the hexagon, what we can do is find the area of one of these triangles and then multiply that times six and that gives us the area of the hexagon because we do know how to find the area of a triangle. The thing is, is we don't have the base and we don't have the height. This is where we can use trigonometry to find those. All right. Let's start with this. Notice we've got segment FD. Remember we've got isosceles triangles. F is a midpoint. So when we construct a segment from the midpoint to the vertex of an isosceles triangle, if you remember, we've talked about this before, we, we're creating four special segments. This is the altitude, this is the median, the angle bisector, and the perpendicular bisector. So if this is the angle bisector, well, um, let's back up. We didn't talk about these angles. You know, these, these six angles, remember the triangles are congruent. So these six angles together make up 360 degrees. So since they're congruent, when we divide them up into six equal parts, each of these vertex angles is 60 degrees. Okay, so back to segment FD. Segment FD is an angle bisector. Okay, so I'm, I'm dividing this angle, the 60 degree angle, into two equal halves. So this is a, this angle here is a 30 degree angle. Okay. And remember that they told we were told that the diagonal is 40 inches long. So from D to C, for example, that's 20 inches. Okay, so segment CD is 20 inches long. And um, if we're going to find the area of this triangle, we need the base and we need the height. With what I have here, I can find FC, which is half the base. Let's call that length of FC, let's call that X. All right. And then I can also with um, I can also you know I need the altitude I need the height of the triangle, let's call that y. All right, and so we can use trigon uh, trigonometric uh, ratios to find x and y. We haven't talked about our special right triangle theorem, uh, uh, our special right triangles yet, what their measurements are. So we're going to have to use trig. All right. Um, let's start with x. Okay, so remember, if I can get x, I can double that to get the base. So, looking at x from this 30 degree angle, I want x, that's the opposite leg, and I have the hypotenuse. So, I'm talking about the sine ratio here. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, the sine of 30 degrees has to equal opposite, which is x, over 30. Okay, uh, excuse me, x over 20. Okay, so if I can get x by itself, that gives me the length of fc. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 20 to get to get rid of that as 20 and get x by itself. So what I'll end up with is 20 times the sine of 30 
it's equal to x, okay? And let's use our calculator to use that, to, to find this, okay? If you, on your, if you don't have a, a scientific calculator on your computer, you can open up from accessories the, com the, the calculator and you can pull down view and choose scientific. All right, so I'm going to first find the sine of 30. So the way this calculator works, some of them work differently. I'm going to do 30 and then sine would, would be the order I'd follow for this calculator. So the sine of 30 is 1 half and then I'm going to multiply that times 20, which is equal to 10. Okay, so x is equal to 10. That's a nice clean number. Let me write it over here. Okay, now I want to find y, the altitude, because we're trying to find the area of the, or the, the, yeah, the area of the triangle. Okay, and I could do that a couple different ways now that I have this length. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to do um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's cosine. So the cosine of 30 has to equal um, opt or adjacent. So that's y over hypotenuse, which is 20. Okay, so remember cosine of 30, that's some value. All right, I'm going to try to get y by itself, so I'm going to multiply 20 by both sides. So I have 20 times the cosine of 30, and that has to equal y. So when I pull out my calculator, I'm going to do the cosine of 30, and I'm going to multiply that times 20, and I get set approximately 17.3. So let's write that right here. Approximately 17.3. Okay, now I'm ready to find the area of my triangle. Remember the area of the triangle is one-half the base times the height. Okay, so in this case my base, I'm going to try to find the area of this green triangle. So my base is 10 times 2, which is 20. And my height is approximately 17.3. So I'm going to multiply that all together. So I've got one half or 0.5 times the base, which we said was 20, times the height, which is approximately 17.3. Okay, and that's equal to 173. And so that's the area of one triangle. And then if, we, if I multiply that times 6, I've got the area of the, of the hexagon, 1,038 um, square inches. So if we go back to our problem, Okay, they've got 1,039, so our rounding was a little bit differently, but that's C, 1,039. All right, so I hope that helped. Let's stop there.